Charter and Review Committee uh, in the hearing room is being recorded. Uh, before we get on with our agenda, I want to take a minute to publicly congratulate Lynn on her new job. <coughs> Finally, an enter of Long Meadow, which she'll be beginning in uh, next month. Uh, Lynn has been a standout for the city, and I can speak directly to her work on this committee. And very invaluable in your insights and all the help that you've given us in um, facilitating everything that we've done. Thank you. And I want to share with the rest of the committee that uh, Lynn is um, going to continue with us. She's talked to the mayor, and um, she will remain on the committee until our work is done. So thanks, Lynn. Okay, first item is uh, approval of our minutes for October 1st. I will approval. Any uh, amendments? Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any yes. 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 Um, okay, now uh, public comment. So, um, any of you who wish to speak? Go ahead. Can I come up here? Or just yeah, here? Oh, here. Ah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> you like moved over. I thought maybe it was like. Well, I don't want to cut I didn't realize it was so formal. Like, I didn't want yeah. my back. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, so, my name is Rose Bookbinder, and um, I am a co director at the Piney Valley Worker Center, and our office is just over um, on Hampton Court here. But I am a resident of Haydenville, but I grew up my whole life here in Northampton, so it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and, um, well, first of all, you know, we wanted to uh, keep bringing our members like as much as possible to kind of be a part of this, who are folks who I think are more invisible in our community. Um, and many of our members are folks that work in the restaurants, they work in the farms, um, you know, but our kids go to school with their kids and they're our neighbors, uh, but their voices are, are usually not, you know, part of these conversations. And so uh, many, I guess about a year ago, we worked with the mayor to, um, and the city council to pass a wage theft ordinance, and part of that was also uh, making sure that workers who are immigrants, that um, as what that the businesses are also thinking about how to protect immigrants in the workplace. So we did a series of trainings with business owners if there was a workplace raid by Immigration Customs Enforcement or ICE. And then another part of that was thinking about how the city of Northampton um, can be out in front in doing things um, to protect our community members and also involve them in uh, our government in ways that they should be, that should have been happening you know, many, many years ago, just like how our family entered here in the United States and came through Ellis Island and were given citizenship upon arrival. Unfortunately, those similar laws don't exist for new immigrants um, in our country, and so they're left out of um, processes and voting. And so one thing that we talked about with the mayor was um, how valuable it would be if folks who don't have full citizen status could vote in our city elections and help um, to, you know, this would be a way that they would actually feel like they could participate in, in the city in a, in a newfound way. And I think you all have been talking about that for um, folks who are, you know, uh, 16. And uh, so, we, you know, we're hoping um, and I know that I'm not sure if you know have enough you have enough time to make that recommendation in the charter, but um, in your process, your charter review process. But we're hoping that we can work towards that goal. And there's um, cities and towns across the United States that, especially since um, the new administration at the federal level, have been thinking about how they can implement things that should have been implemented at the federal level but haven't been. And so one of those things is. Most of the folks in our community should have status, but unfortunately that status keeps getting delayed because there can't be agreement at the federal level about what um, status would look like. And so we're asking for you all to think about um, a recommendation on allowing um, non-citizens to vote in city elections. So I hope that made sense. Um, uh, yeah. 
Do any committee members have questions for Rose? Yes. Uh, Rose, we, we actually did discuss. Oh, great. Okay. But part of the concern was given the federal government's tendency at this point, what they did in Vermont was to backdoor access, for instance, licensed photos. Uh -huh. And yeah. we were concerned about the potential uh, uh, people who are vulnerable to uh, to the, the kind of federal intrusion. Sure. We were concerned about that. Yeah, okay, that's and so, yeah. so that was part of the conversation. We don't know, I mean, I don't know if you have thoughts about a workaround for that or something. Yeah, like so the ACLU has really um, timed that issue. Vermont, you know, that became um, well known. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. That became well known after they already made the changes in the law to make sure that ICE couldn't access that information. Um, I think even so, you know, these issues are important to the immigrant community regardless, and they live in fear every day of their lives, anyways. That you know, ICE is going to come to their workplace or to their homes, and so it's important that we create avenues for them to be part of our community. And driving is one of those key things, and voting is, like, these are rights that, you know, we expect as community members. Um, like, what our immigrant members are pushing, like, the main campaign right now is to get driver's license in Massachusetts, because um, the, even if there is still a slight risk that ICE could maybe get that information, the ability to drive freely um, far trumps that, that fear. So, um, yeah. does that answer yeah, that? No, yeah. And there definitely are ways that we can think about how that, that looks. And I don't think it needs to be, um, at least I haven't seen this in the other cities or towns, that there's like some sort of designation that like this person is a citizen or not a citizen. You know, like with the driver's license, there is a different like designation, especially because of the real ID. I mean, this is getting into like, you know, the weeds of, of that conversation, but I don't think that there would need to be like a any sort of marker necessarily. Yeah. And you can share information about what is the what is sorry yeah. on the, other. Um, the ACLU had is looking at what's happened in other states, and they're look, taking that as a lesson. Mm -hmm. And there have been there have been articles written that really break down what, how the, the the Family Mobility Act is different, and it's it's helpful for us to know when we think about. Charters like this too is how do we keep that information secure and safe? And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that in Vermont and in other states, um, they had the ICE had the ability to subpoena RMBs to get that information. Whereas, and I think the ACLU has written something in where that is impossible, which isn't to say that there aren't other loopholes, but that's an important point. Can you just give us your name, please? I'm Andrea Schmidt. Yeah. I'm also a reporter. Other? Any questions? Other questions from members? So, Rose, you said that um, in the instance of, of driver's licenses, that that access trumps any, any fear in the immigrant community. Do you think that concurrently voting rights would also trump increased fear? Um, I mean, I think being able to have a say in local government um, is would be profound. You know, they, I think the ways in which the immigrant community are left out of these day-to-day -day practices is, you know, dehumanizing. Um, and even though, you know, again, as I mentioned before, like they work in the same places we work in, their kids go to the same schools as us, they live on the same streets, like they're left out of all of these things. And, you know, part of the work that we do at the Worker Center is, is build power so that folks have a voice. And, you know, one of the key ways we have a voice is by voting. So um, it's very important to that. Registering to vote is not a compulsory act, so you make an informed decision when you register to vote. So, and that's most important. I mean, if we were able to achieve that status, the informed decision with the possibility of consequences, but at the same time, not uh, deny them access to the vote. Okay, thanks, Rose.
Sí, buenas noches. Good evening. Uh, mi nombre es Jesús. My name is Jesús. Uh, también este, yo tengo, este, escuchando lo que Rose ha hablado. Listening to what Rose has said. Uh, yo también quería, pues, I also wanted to agregar add, algo. Add, add, add something else. Uh, yo soy este, una persona de lo que tienen el TPS. I'm someone, I'm one of the people in this community who has TPS, um, which stands for Temporary Protected Status. Y pues eh, debido al problema que está pasando, que ya lo van a cancelar. And given the issue that's happening at the federal level where TPS is about to be canceled. Uh, pues también este, existe una preocupación There's en a, mí. Yeah, so you know, there exists a pretty deep fear in me. Y es por eso que también estoy acá para que ustedes pues nos brinden la ayuda como migrantes. And that's why I'm here to ask for your support um, to protect and support immigrants in our community. Sí, porque nosotros somos este, el, la ayuda para nuestras familias, nuestros hijos. We're the main breadwinners for our families and our children. Y pues sin sí, nosotros ellos también están este, desamparados. And without us, they're lost. Eh, es por eso que pues yo pues, pues, les pido por favor que pues que nos ayuden uh, pues en lo que en lo que esté uh, a alcance que ustedes pueden hacer. And it's for that reason that I ask for your support to you know in this charter um, whatever is within your reach um, you know this local yeah passing a local charter like this would be a, a really simple and concrete way to support us. So. Yes, that's all. Thank you. To clarify, he, when you refer to uh, our, our work on the charter to support you, are you st specifically speaking to the issue of voting rights? He said yes, and then she's asking him yeah. like, are there other ways that you can see this? Yes, yeah, so, sorry. Yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. Um. <laughs> um so he said yes, specifically what he means, you know, he's asking for your support um, within the realm of voting rights, specifically given that that's what the issue is at hand today. Um, but I, he also, what he also says is that it's really important that this is just something that we hold more as a community, this collective responsibility to protect and support folks. He says there's a lot of fear, and when folks don't feel supported by their municipalities, um, and they feel and they feel invisible by the way that things function locally. Um, that perpetuates even more fear. Any uh, questions? What are the yeah. other conditions that contribute to the sense of invisibility? I understand that fear dictates that, but fear in the particular municipal sense, what in the city actually at least informs that fear. Fear exists all the time and it's pervasive because people don't look at you. Wait, wait, wait. 
for those who people don't see you as as an equal or as human really, or as someone that's like a citizen, like not the same. I'm trying to it's kind of I'm trying to give a direct translation. No, I, mean, I think I understood what you said. Great. That, that um, so it's a pervasive sense of how they how anyone would feel in the community that alienation. It's based simply mm -hmm. alienation. Yeah. So he says that there's a real climate of fear that's been perpetuated by this president that really has unleashed a lot of racism that is that is happening here, that lives in our community here, and that impacts him and also anyone in the community that's an immigrant. Um, and addition, in addition to that, you know, um, it really has created and emboldened employers to take advantage of workers um, and to exploit them and and really you know, give them really terrible working conditions and not protect them in the way that they deserve. Thank you. Actually, do is include this as an agenda item. It would be the most appropriate to include as an agenda item at the Jackson Street School meeting, mm -hmm. or hopefully we will actually have um, even more people talking about this one issue. And I, I mean, I don't know how appropriate it is for just a comment on. I don't have a problem. I just don't want to go too far down this road because as far as the discussion, yeah, but it's better for some, information purposes. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Right. I would like though to respond to the concern that's been raised while our visitors are still here and acknowledge that we have given this some consideration um, and there there were concerns that I think mirrored what Bill said about the possible federal intrusion resulting from uh, from uh, registering the vote. Yeah, so initially I brought this um, as a potential topic that of something that the mayor would be submitting to the Charter Review to take up. Um, some initial research was done, but not enough to come up with something concrete enough to put forward. And there was also some serious concern about uh, carrying something like this out and uh, kind of safety risk it may put people at if they were to register to vote in municipal elections and what that what could be done with that information. So um, nothing further happened um, with formulating any sort of proposal to bring forward. Okay, so yeah, go ahead. So. I, I would actually request that we make this an agenda item for the next meeting. Um, for the purpose of a more expansive conversation and for possible inclusion in the, in the petition. 
at our next meeting is October 29th. That's a special meeting that we're having a public forum at Jackson Street School. Okay, so, so I, just to summarize, this is an issue that has been on our radar. We believe it's an important issue. Uh, and we're going to continue to um, consider whether we can include a recommendation in our report that will be submitted by the end of the year. So there will be a specific agenda item October 29th at Jackson Street School. So I hope that we'll see you and others at that point. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. All right, updates from community members. Um, anybody, anyone, any of you have any updates? I do. Yes, but it also relates to number four, so I don't know. I defer to someone else if they have something before that. Well, if, if, if it directly relates to uh, the letter to the mayor, then we'll discuss it then. Okay. All right, I have one update. Uh, I communicated with Ryan O'Donnell. Uh, the City Council. Uh, we are on the agenda for December 5th to make a presentation um, whatever form we, we wish. The, the thinking here now is that we realize that the, uh, it will be the new City Council that actually takes the correct report and, and furthers it. Um, and presumably some or all of us will be called to meet with that City Council. But we, we wanted as a body while we were still in existence to make a presentation so we're on the yep, I saw the email exchange. Yep, we're on the December fifth agenda. Okay, any, any, any other updates? All right, uh, so now we're on to the uh, to the letter to the mayor. So when do you sure. want to so um, the whole annual report thing was really kind of sticking with me that there was such a uh, distinct date that it stopped that I knew there had to be a reason why. So I pulled the council records from 1988 and 1989 and I also spoke with the previous city clerk who has a wealth of information in her head and she um, pointed me in the direction of the council minutes because it was in the budget for 88. Um, it was a funding of a printing committee for $13,000 and that was approved. In 1989, the printing committee request was for 16000 and some change, and the council struck that budget in half. And they, I haven't found the actual minutes of what, of why they did that, but it was the annual report that they did not fund. And from that date forward, it was not funded. So that wasn't the mayor, it was the council that did that. And it was a printing committee. It was not the mayor's, you know, doing of, um, of preparing that report. It was a separate standalone committee of very well, it's hard to know where the mayor began and where the, the city council committees ended. <laughs> right, that's right. Uh, but, so that aligns with the uh, <coughs> testimony we heard from Fred about the gap beginning in 1989. Um, the, the yeah, but reports. there's no annual report. Right. right. There was a city budget. Yes. Right. But no reports in the form that, yep. that he was um, lobbying and if, okay, so it was a it was a funding issue. Then. I don't. There could have been more to it. I don't know. The minutes weren't that detailed. Um, I did ask for copies of the finance committee minutes, and uh, the uh, clerk's office wasn't able to complete those. Um, but there should be minutes of finance committee plan or minutes from the printing committee. Um, and I suppose we could make a formal request for someone to find it. State law requires towns to file annual reports. Not require that for cities. Okay. Pretty sure that that's the law. Mm -hmm. But it does require them to file a budget, right. which which would include a narrative. Right. It does include a narrative. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah. Well, that was you missed <coughs> two lengthy conversations about how. <laughs> I've been reading all about it. Yeah, okay. Okay. You've been reading any excellent recap. I have. I have. It's just like being there. Uh, yeah, yeah. We suspect you're not sleep deprived. Was it clear if that's all that committee did? It or looked like they must have done something else because half of they, they did get half the okay. money that they requested. It wasn't clear from the council record what that money's for. That's 
I, I really wish there was more to back that up, but they just they couldn't find the fi finance in this. Um. So um, at the last meeting, we actually took two votes related to this. One was to not include any recommendations in the charter related to annual reporting for the content. But uh, we also voted to send a letter to the mayor because we felt that this was an important issue, uh, but we wanted to direct our recommendations on this one to the mayor because it is that uh, he or she who um, sort of shapes the expectations for what the annual budget report will look like. So the letter, uh, Bob very um, uh, kindly drafted uh, a letter that uh, we have before us tonight. So I want uh, comments on the letter. Um, these are recommendations that, um, um, that we really uh, haven't had a chance to discuss yet, but um, I think Bob did a good, good job of, of giving some concrete suggestions that would answer some of the concerns that we've heard. Bob, you want to speak any further to the, the specifics? I would hope that it speaks for itself. Okay. I mean, we're asking for, we're making ourselves available to the mayor should he wish to discuss this topic, which is not going to be so well elucidated in the final report. Should he wish to discuss it, we could discuss it. I mean, I don't look upon this so much as um, well, there are recommendations, of course, but I, but I think there are more conversation points with the mayor should he wish to. Discuss the word. Comments? Bill? Uh, we've been in conversation with uh, this is the last item that Bob has in his letter with um, Vice Chair, uh, Councilor Shara, about um, essentially Know Your City workshops. We had, uh, um, what were they called? They were yeah, city school that, that uh, uh, a few years ago, where similar to the police academy, the Citizens Police Academy, um, that that provided basically a breakdown in structure and, and, and a deeper analysis for citizens to have a better understanding. And the hope was also to have a better, for counselors, including new counselors, have a better understanding as, as they wade into their new jobs. And reinstituting that, and um, and I think she's had a conversation with the mayor as well about that. Um, so that's on uh, that's on the radar, and it's actually being considered seriously being considered to figure out what's the best way to affect that, um, because we, as we know, we're going to have a substantial change in the city council, and it'd be to everyone's benefit to have people more up to speed, but also. Bring along citizens as well as far as, and they're invaluable. All the people who experience it uh, actually enjoy them or are very interested. I mean, I don't expect to have queues around the block of people trying to sign up, but the fact is, the people who do participate and choose to it has it has a, it's very meaningful and um, helpful. I think because you also have at that point you have advocates who can speak in, in with in an informed way about municipal governance, which is not always the case. I've seen them be very successful. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel that the letter captures the concerns that we heard and addresses them with proper recommendations? Very well. Yeah, I particularly appreciative of, of the fact that Bob, in parts that we didn't feel this certainly didn't qualify, and the reasons why it didn't qualify for introduction into the charter, and then acknowledging um, it's not a critique, it's more just basically a request, a citizen's request, because as we said before, the narrative is up to the author, whatever mayor that is, and whatever they include or not include is essentially their choice. And we're not mandating, we're just requesting for, um, if 
it's possible and if the mayor agrees to provide a uh, more descriptive or more expansive narration for the for the budgets. So I think mean, that I think I get the sense that that was the sense of this committee that we wanted to impart. So the only thing I would like to point out in that second section of the letter, where um, it's talking about fiscal transparency, um, that's maybe not the word you're using, but there is an entire web site or web page on the city website dedicated to fiscal transparency. Um, it has our vis visual budget, which you can go in and do make really cool um, graphs and charts with just the information that you're seeking. Um, we have the bond ratings and trust fund reports on there. All the city budgets are there. The employee gross salaries going back to, I think, 2011. Uh, the independent audit and then open checkbooks there as well. So I just feel I, like. Yeah, I've mentioned that. Um, and I recognize that it's there. So I guess I would just, if the letter is going to say something like that, I think it would be really helpful to be more specific. Because I feel like there, the quick answer is, well, we already have that. So that's done. We're done with that. But that's. If you're pointing it out in a letter, it'd be really helpful to know, like, is that page not sufficient, or should something should be formatted differently or linked differently, just so that we could actually achieve what people are asking us to do. Yeah, I think I was trying to say that it could be linked differently, and I think it I could be pointed out that I got in there, and I couldn't navigate the open checkbook very well. Um, and we know that there's some, you know, issues with the way the budget is presented. So, I think what I was trying to suggest is putting the financial stuff all in one place, and perhaps displayed better, easier to access and find, might be helpful. I tried to say that a lot of the stuff is already there, but it, it's hard to navigate the website. I mean, what? I, I'm sorry. What part of the what paragraph in the letter are you specifically One bolded enhanced budget document. And uh, create an information nexus on the city website. That's the one I was referencing. Okay. Oh, okay. Create an information Maybe it's just more context on that page. I mean, I know what that stuff is, but there's not an explanation of what each of these things are, or what, what you can find with each of them. Um, so, what, what you're saying, Lee, is that you believe that the distinct place on the website where linked to your sources could be housed and easily accessed already exists. Right. Okay. I, but if there's a reason that it should be called out, I just would be more specific, like age name or where it's placed or the definition of what those items are. That's something tangible that we can actually make a change with. Um, it's hard to tell, I guess, the creators that something's not right yes. if you don't tell us exactly what what you want changed. Yes. Well, you want on what, well, what might be done differently to make it more uh, accessible and user friendly. The notion of an information nexus I came up with to try to respond to much of what Fred had to say. And that's, he, he doesn't, he, even though he doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to go online to find it, but he'd like to go to one place. Well, I don't happen to believe that the annual report that he longs for is in any way sufficient to answer hardly any of the questions that he was asked. However, I do believe that very many of the answers to the questions he was asking are already on the website. So um, whether, we, whether we educate Fred as to how to get to the website or others like him, I think it should be the website that is viewed generally in the community as the place to go to get answers. And that's what I mean by an information nexus. Um, if if the website then on the, on the main page on the title page directed people with questions to a place where you know they can be found or the links to the answers could be found and indeed including links to the 
to the Department of Education stuff, to the um, federal crime stats, have that all in one area where a, where a person who is doing research to answer questions would go, I think that would be a good thing. And I think it would be helpful. Um, and I don't think it currently is, is presented on the website as I find it. Yes, Bill. So the, I think to Bob's point, I mean, the in order to get to the page that Lynn describes, actually you have to go to the matter page and then look down and then go to physical transparency or look for it. The one on the splash page, and it's it's under fiscal transparency, which is actually reasonable, but I think um, what Bob is saying, some aggregate point that comes on the splash page, the front page, for uh, vital statistics. You can listen under uh, uh, Northampton Vital Statistics. Um, you click on that, and then there's the link options for this and crime statistics and fire responses and all the stuff that Fred was asking for. At least it's one less click, it's one less search trying to figure out what, what the word is you're looking for. If it's right there on the front page, that first page you see right there, when that comes up, you have the government tab, our city tab, services, business, and how do I do it? Uh, vital statistics might be one of them. So actually all those drop downs are mega menus. They right. drop down and government in our city has fiscal transparency listed in it. Right. Um, uh, yeah, and then how do I that. has like, how do I register to vote? How do I get a birth certificate? Right. How do I, so this is all really great feedback because what happens is we live and work this every day right. and trying to figure out how some um, user might come to the site and look for something is, is hard to do if, because we already know yeah. what we're looking for. So we've tried to cross-reference multiple places, um, not to go too deep into like the nitty-gritty of it, but one thought I had was reprogramming that online payments button to say fiscal or finance, right. you know, municipal finance or something like that, and then we could link online payments there as well. But You know, I think that, that somebody who's looking for police crime statistics, it's likely to be somebody that's different than who's looking for a uh, building permits issue. And so if you're gonna have a vital statistics, I think maybe it should be links to the, the, the web page for the department whose vital statistic it is. Because, uh, you know, I, just putting, you know, uh, one link, all the vital statistics is just, be overwhelming. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But I, I think a button or a tab that actually allows you, I mean, because people, as Lynn pointed out, people come to the site for a variety of reasons, but one of them, if they wanted to do, I mean, permit searches, the first thing you go to is go to how, how can we help you? You type in permit searches, and then it will give you a whole, right, well, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a bully mushy search. That's what these things are. You have to bear down. If you have, uh, for instance, when you do get this, an expanded version of this on the physical transparency, but then you have building department and permits right. or uh, planning office and, and applications and right. or those, those, so that tab list, so you can go through, you can quickly hop to those. So sometimes, and by the way, we won a reward for this site, right? We, did, we got yeah, that's the, the other version. Yeah, the other version of this. But this was our refresh. Uh, and and this is actually much improved. And but it, it, and I think um, part of the frustration that I heard Fred describing was, or, or actually more uh, Councilor from Moscow describing was that she didn't know how to do this. She looks at the page and she's overwhelmed and she just shuts down and doesn't do it. And if if you say vital statistics or uh, or municipal data, that's a button. That would be the first thing that they were looking for. They were looking for some version of that. At least they know there's a drill down from there. One would hope. That's supposedly how that works in their mind. Uh, so she says there's too many buttons. I just shut down. So let's put another button on there. Well, no, it wasn't that she said there were too many buttons. It's just that she she felt she didn't know how, and she felt that she also represented a significant portion of the population that 
didn't know how to essentially navigate online to find these things. So whatever we can do to facilitate right. that yes. is to the good. Um, it's still not going to satisfy her, I don't think, by any stretch, but, but if, at least if we include and get access for more people, then... Someone who, yeah, I mean, they're not going to be satisfied except for maybe Fred if we send them to a library. Right. And, um, and I, am, I am very uh, reluctant to do anything that would have a result of, of more direct phone calls to department heads. So short of those two things, something here where it can be known generally that this is where you can find a lot of information would be a good thing it, to prevent both of those two less desirable um, outcomes. You know, more Fred's, Fred's big frustration was he couldn't go to the library to get it. He couldn't go. He couldn't go when he wanted to to get it. So they want they want answers in real time to questions as they come into their heads. Um, you know, and and I just I just think that making the, making government employees available to them to get answers on demand in real time is not a not a good solution. We should send them somewhere first. And I think and that's where the notion of an information nexus came in. Well, is it, is it simply a matter of better marking on the home stage um, how you get to that information nexus? Oh, all those vital statistics? I think it's I think it's marking it, yes, but I think I think it's also including some stuff that that we have, that he asked about that, are, that is not there now, and in particular, I don't know that if if, if um, major crime staffs are there, and I don't know if school enrollment is there. That seems to be what it was on his mind particularly. But we know that information exists, and uh, to make it available in a certain place for him to find. Well, what, what you're suggesting, Bob, is not that, that, that the, necessarily that all this information exists somewhere be posted on the website, but it, that, that it be linked to clearly yes. in the uh, State Department ad or the uh, federal crime database, right? Yep. Uh, well, maybe a bit more clarity in that section that's what you're asking for. Yeah, or even just, um, just maybe amending it to say um, Northampton statistical or uh, vital information be, um, be contained in, in one helpful location. We can put links off to other pages, that's not an issue. But just at least having one landing page where you can go and then go from there. Yes. And then be clearly marked on, on the home page. Um, yes, I, I'm not going to say that we're 100% going to reprogram that online payment button. I'd want to first check and see how many hits that button gets. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't know if someone coming to get a water bill would know to click on something else. Um, mm -hmm. So just keep it under our city and the board of it. Right, just be more descriptive. Mm -hmm. Not to the one has the five buttons. Thank you. Um, as a former treasurer, I would certainly argue to keep that as yeah. <laughs> In fact, when I was going through this exercise, I wanted three buttons <coughs> on the splash page. <laughs> I don't want. I <laughs> want. was told to be happy. <laughs> Are we living in a pull-down menu? No, we can yeah. make that as big as we want. Oh, you mean the categories? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you can five. Yeah. It limit you to five categories each time. Yep. There's a whole um, area of expertise on this, and they have more stats and helpful mm -hmm. information from across the country based on what municipal websites. Um, are most helpful. Right. Um, is, is this screen live? Can it be manipulated? I think you can touch it, yeah. It's a touch screen right now. It should be. I don't know whose computer it's hooked up to, but, or 
or who's it, who it's logged in under, but you should be able to touch one of the drop downs. Well, I feel so inadequate. All of them have devices. Can anybody tell that I still love paper? <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> Stan brought his, his recycling bin. Just hit it. So yeah. I can touch it. There you go. Oh, so it's acting like an actual mouse, too. Maybe there was a mouse and it clicked on that. So now you have to scroll down. So? There you go. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Hampton looks like a logical place to put a... Uh... So, there, yeah, there is demographic and statistics. Okay. That links to a bunch of, like, the American... Um, uh, There's federal census info on there, but there's also the what's the American that federal website where you can pull stats on everything you could possibly want. American, it's escaping me, but there's a link to that there as well. American deep state. That's what's called <laughs> deep state. <laughs> okay, it's so way, it's something um, to, to do with the census. Uh, I would, I mean, I would go in about North Hampton if I'm that's the information I'm after, and um, uh, so I don't know uh, what 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 do we get to if we put well, the demographics and statistics? You, you do see that the fiscal transparency button is there yeah. too. So yeah. um, that goes to this page, um, which is North Hampton complete economic profile tables. Community data profile, community indicators. So those, a lot of those would have been updated after the 2010 census, which is why they're 2011 because okay. they pulled from that data. Well, would you agree, Bob, that this is a good starting point to, to build on? Well, the um, links to, to other statistics. What are you asking me to do? Do you think that this would be the place to build out uh, uh, more links to vital statistics? If someone who came to the website were led here, yes. And that's the but tricky if part. Just to look at the front page, you're not going to get there. Right. The, 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 I mean, someone who's a little more curious than being overwhelmed would say, okay, I'll try government, I'll try our city and see what that tab takes you to. Um, if there was literally something on the front page uh, that just simply said, go here and it does a similar split down, or maybe change from our city to um, vital data and statistics, something like that. Uh, it's not quite as sexy, it's not actually quite as homey, but the fact is if Fred or somebody else were to come to this page, that would be the first thing that would grab their eye. And that's what I want to look at. I want to find the tax delinquents. I want to find who was, how many murders were committed in 1925. But the universe of information is so huge. Oh, I mean, you're we, getting that. We, we know that. We, we how are we possibly going to anticipate? anticipate. Well, we, we know that. But, but you were here for like three hours <laughs> of grilling us as to why it's not here now. Two people. Yeah, I mean, we have to two keep people. Two We're two people. people. Yeah. I'm, well, well, this is this is a solution in search of church for a problem, and I'm just coming in. I know I'm coming in, not having listened, but I've heard Fred. I like this is not the first time Fred has spoken. Um, no, I don't think I don't think and we're not looking for the comprehensive uh, data search system. We're just I, I think. Would, our compromise is to provide at least easier access for the citizens, by and large. Not Fred or Ian Tomasco exclusively, as I said, I don't know if we'll satisfy them, but it is for a person to come to this page who is trying to find any type of information about crime statistics in the last year, or, you know, um, we're not going to list the enrollment. Actually, I found the enrollment for Bridgeley School from another avenue. For a simple Google search, but um, and by the way, I did type. I just typed in uh, Bridge Street School enrollment in the Help Me We Help You, and it didn't get me anywhere. Near that. <laughs> it showed me a bunch of PDFs for a number of other things and PTO meetings and stuff. So that's part of it. It's it's just 
we all agree that we're at this weird juncture in information technology where we have people who rely on paper and have a fondness for the way things were condensed in easily accessible form and realizing the, the data that we, we accumulate now is vastly larger and, and much more problematic. I think Fred's underestimation about what, what it is we're trying to do, as I described, was drinking from a fire hose. There's no way that you can have one person distill all this information in a narrative that would actually satisfy them, I think. But at the same time, I think um, for an average person, first coming to the page, trying to look up information that should be relevant, that is actually fairly accessible, providing you know which tab to hit and where to search. If we can improve that, and I know that you guys have been working on this forever and ever and a day, and this is markedly improved from the, actually it's markedly improved from the website we had when I first got elected, which was basically picture of City Hall and the phone number blinked. And that was it. And it didn't even link to anything. It's just the phone number for City Hall link. Uh, so we're, we're worlds ahead there. But I mean, I, I, I think that some of the suggestions, as to what Bob's saying, I think are not unreasonable. Well, it may be as simple as, as being uh, a bit more expansive in the header uh, for, rather than simply saying our city say, you know, city statistics and history. Yeah. Do you have a question about our city? Um, you know, there are sites that have, that have a, an icon, like a dog with a magnifying glass, or Sherlock Holmes or something, for questions, and they take you to a place. Well, there is a question bar. That's the biggest thing on the page. It is the, how can we help you button. It's right there, but that's actually not all that helpful. The reason that sometimes I find it not all that helpful is it gives you too much information. And if you don't really refine your searching um, properly, it's too much information. And that's what I'm concerned about here, that there's just too much to try to put under one butt. And you know, it's almost like you want to have, if you want information about housing, here's the planning office, here's the, the you know, inspection offices. If you want information about crime statistics, here's the police department's website because it's, it's all you really can do is direct people to the website where that web information can be found. Because you, I mean, are, are you going to be, are you going to anticipate violent crimes, felonies? Mis I mean, how much crime statistics do you want to specifically link to in this? Well, I think I think sending them to the place where the information resides is what a nexus is about. Right, but what we're sending to is the place where you can find the link to the information. Exactly. Right. So, right. But, but that's that's better than sending them directly to the police chief asking a question about how many how much shoplifting was last year. But you see, I, I you know, for at least for Maria, and I was here when Fred and Maria were here. I was that here was, uh, the, the first time. time. You know, so I heard some of what they had to say. Um, you know, I don't think Maria is ever going to be satisfied with any of this. And I do believe that we can improve the website. And I think that, you know, I, I think the search engine may need to be improved. But. Well, it's not our task to redesign the website. That's right. I'm simply trying to respond to Lynn's question about what specifically um, are we recommending in this letter that, that, that the mayor may or may not take into consideration when. Um, uh, the essential the essential recommendation is to somehow get people to the website because answers to their questions may be found there. So that's that's recommendation number one, that the website should be the the, the first place to go if you have a question, right? Rather than the library, rather than knocking on somebody's door. Now the irony about Fred is he wants to rely on this book to answer a question that comes into his mind at any moment, but the books are gonna be at least a year old. You know, so, you know, we can do better than that. Yes. I'm, I'm questioning Go whether ahead. we even need to include this paragraph, which is pretty much about what Fred said. You know, one, one resident encouraged the city to resume publication. Um. A traditional annual report. That's, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that's not going to happen, correct? And so, uh, 
I feel like this could be pared down to really just the recommendation that that we look at how the information is presented on our website and making it easier to use, rather than talking about these two people that were upset about how they got their information or how they're not getting their information. Because we're moving forward. We're not going to go back to a book in the library. So I, I feel like this could be, or I think it's really well written, and it covers everything we spoke about, but I don't think it's necessary to talk about threat in this document. Uh, that's my thing. I, I agree with what Robbie's saying there, but um, besides, that's reflective of the minutes, the conversations that we're having, and I don't think that that's necessarily what we need to impart to the mayor in this letter. I'm actually even questioning the need for the letter, and I sort of did the last meeting too, but I could have gone either way. <laughs> um, but I don't know that. You know, I'm not, I, I guess I don't feel like this particular issue is worthy of a pull-out letter. I mean, there are other things that, that really we spoke a lot about that are going to be in our report as issues of importance. And I feel like it's goes along with that, but I'm not certain it merits a letter. Um, the report, but. Well, uh, yeah. can you yeah. But just to recap my uh, my memory of the discussion that we had, we felt that um, that this deserved to be in a separate communication with the mayor because it is it is largely up to whoever happens to be mayor to determine the, the content of the of the annual reporting that goes into the budget document. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to bring that to the attention of the person who, you know, is largely responsible for shaping that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess I feel like it's going to be with this particular mayor evident in what we present as part of our report that, that, uh, that that's a given, that that's under his. Um, for you, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, same. I just we also have the lay on our kind of liaison. Yeah. Um, so we we had a brief conversation. I've also talked to the finance director about it. Um, Their budget is not a widely read document, so we can spend a lot of time adding things to it, but the reality is that people just don't really read it. Um, I'm hesitant to add a lot more work to departments and to the finance director when most of the information you can get online now. Um, that's partly why I abstain from the last vote mm -hmm. on the letter because I just it's this year was the biggest turnout we've ever had at the town hall meetings and it wasn't because of the statistics from the health department it was because of the school contract the mm -hmm. teacher contract so I mean the mayor's literally held town hall meetings every single year and um, sometimes no one shows up sometimes one person shows up the largest has been like five in a year, uh, five people in one time. Um, so I'm not trying to sound negative and not wanting to change something, but I'm just not hearing, I don't think hearing from Fred and uh, Maria is a good representation of what the broader community wants in a budget document. So we're talking about two different things. One is the budget narrative, and the other is also some uh, great facility on navigating the website. The website actually turns out to be the most important. It's obviously not under our purview, actually. Um, but to come up in the, in, in the course of the information that we solicited, and it does prompt 
genuine, not just, and we'll, we'll forget about the two people who are testifying, just generally as we look at this, and I agree, I don't want to, when there are, for instance, crime statistics, is an off-site thing. You can go to Northampton, uh, neighborhoodscout.com for Northampton. You can do an off-site link that takes people to that. It does uh, crime analysis, crime statistic analysis. You can get more granular, list what they are. It does comparisons. All the things that Fred was talking about, for one thing, is providing context and description. Like, how, do you relate, how does Northampton relate to other communities as far as crime and stuff like that? So it's a little more expansive. It's more meta view from outside. But it's a link that could be on our page that would send people if they wanted to. Uh, it, it, now, then there's those people who want to look and find out what happened with those, why were those police cars last month down, accumulated at this house two doors down from me. I don't know what happened there. That's part of the thing, and that, that's not going to show up. Um, so, I, 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 you know, I mean, what those books were, were those type of things that they described who, you know, I, I, as Fred told us, uh, uh, talked about officer so-and-so kicking two kids off the railroad tracks and citing them and sending them home to their parents. That's in this book. But, you know, it's just sort of like, <coughs> okay. The New York phone book. Exactly. Well, the, ours, ours, as I said, the book wouldn't be, there, there couldn't be a book big enough to do this. It wouldn't, and nor, is it actually germane? That's personal. That's more anecdotal type of stuff, and it was cra crafted by someone with their own perspective on what story they want to impart, which is essentially what the mayor's doing with their narrative. So, I, I mean, I think the letter actually fleshes out, in the main, does what we asked. It fleshes out at least the concerns expressed and maybe some some recommendations on our part, and that's pretty much where we should leave it because it's not a charter question as we all agree and um, and, and in the end um, I think everyone universally agreed it's difficult to find information and because of its immensity and whatever we can do to facilitate that's good and um, there's too much information to absorb But, but I, I actually agree, Robbie, that at least deleting that paragraph, I understand the point that you're making, that there's so many recommendations that we're making that are not necessarily charter petition requests. But that, um, this one's a generic response. I don't think it's just Fred and Maria, I think, that we all basically expressed a concern about. Whatever, I mean, the ambition and the aspirations to be as transparent and is accessible because, as I described, there's transparency to the point of invisibility. If you, if you just have so much transparency, it doesn't do anything. It's, it's just just numbers and jots and figures and stuff. It means nothing. So I would disagree with that. I, I guess I was just thinking that the, the letter could be more pointed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't just Fred and his appearances. I mean, it came. It, it went right back to the, almost our very first meeting with Council of Climate in the Ombuds, the Ombuds office and the Information Office and, and all of that. I mean, it, it has been a through line for this entire endeavor, but the, the, um, the need for information, the need for representation, the need for... In that respect, we have kind of de facto at least information officers, as I said. I mean, Lynn and Annie in court, in the mayor's office, then the clerk's office as well. They field questions all the time. They, they just have to be the closest to the door when folks walk in. Um, Laura Kretzler uh, works as the assistant to the council, also same thing. People go, and they are they can direct people to the right offices and, the, um, and or at least facilitate and help them in their searches, which is what I was suggesting to the two te the people testifying. They could be more helpful than just railing against the inequities of, uh, of not having this little merit of this little leather bound book. So, having one person, the concern I remember when the Ombuds uh, conversation came up was that there is entirely possible to have a person sitting in a room doing next to nothing. 
just sort of waiting for the next phone call when you already have people who serve in that capacity and do quite ably actually. So I, 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 you know, generating another office, another uh, right. budget line for someone who well, there hasn't been a demonstrable need for that as far as I can tell. And there is always the public records request is rude. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, and, and, and I can't tell you how many times that yeah. we have gotten a public records request and we have directed them to a particular link to our website. And that's, we do this all the time. And so, um, you know, I think that the website can be improved. And I think that that's perhaps the message, that the website can be improved, not that we should you know, put everything in one place or just make it more easily accessible. Can you uh, point out to me the, the paragraph that you're proposing to delete? Oh, so then you have to rely on my take. I do. Right? <laughs> Touche. Uh -huh. I like this sentence here. One, one speaker encouraged the city to resume publication, and that can go. That no, you point to uh, yeah. that. Okay. You lose that one for sure. Okay. The sentence following. Yep. So you're not feeling strongly enough, uh, Robbie, to want to rescind our vote if you send this letter to me. No, no. I understand the importance of pointing out if this is what we're agreeing on um, improving the website. Uh, yeah, I too believe that it goes beyond the recency of uh, three uh, sessions that we spent with Fred and two with Maria. I, I think that there has been a theme that we've heard that, that yes, the city is <coughs> committed to accessibility and transparency, but there are improvements that can be made. There are always improvements that will help, I think, uh, people, you know, lead, help lead people to the information that they're that they're seeking, and I think that if, if we can if we can make that point in a in a constructive way, that there's no there's no harm in, in, in doing that. Pulling that out as a kind of a standalone letter to the mayor, outside of all the recommendations that will be in the report. So, um, is there anything that we talked about some? Um, some clarity and some deletion. Is there anything that people feel we should add to this letter? Anything that wasn't covered? <coughs> All right, well, why don't uh, Bob, you and I'll just work on reworking it a bit, okay? okay. And we'll uh, revisit it. Uh, uh, Any other comments? All right, so um, uh, the second attachment was a, an expanded um, version of the sum, executive summary of our recommendations with the new section topics for further study added to it. Um, so, I'm interested in hearing from anybody about comments, suggestions. Stay. Yes, if I may. Um, I, I just want to be clear that I'm under that, what, 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 I wasn't here and I understand yeah. that I'm just reading through this. Um, I think it would be more effective if you actually put every motion in right in the report and not attach the minutes. Because everybody who walks in and wants a copy of the report, uh, are you expecting the clerk to give them a copy of this plus every set of minutes and every document that came into this committee? You should not attach them to the report. Uh, that's my strong recommendation. If anybody wants the minutes, they can get them. But I would put the motion, specifically the motion that was made, motion to approve lowering municipal voting age, state the motion, state the vote, state the, the general reason as you have here why it was done but you're, you're asking for trouble because under the charter, it requires that um, 
that anybody who walks into the clerk's office gets a copy for no more than the reproduction cost. So you're telling the clerk that she's going to be making all of these copies, spending all that time copying every set of minutes for anybody who walks into the clerk's office and just wants a copy of the report. Uh, so, uh, I'm sorry, you want every motion that has approved a recommended change to be included in the executive summary? In, in the report. In this report, the report should be a single document that state what the motions were, what the vote was, and why. And that is the report. It says, um, a report summarizing the special committee's recommendation with any proposed revisions of the city charter contained therein. And so it's envisioning this to be in one integrated report. And you know, the idea that somebody has to, okay, the motion was approved, it was approved on May 31st, now I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to find the minutes and read through the minutes of that. That's not, I don't, I don't believe that that's what the Charter envisions. The Charter envisions is just a summary, and anybody who wants to go read those minutes can go read the minutes, but again, this is a summary, a summary, that's it. And um, all the documents that came in are available, they're in the clerk's office, they'll be available, everybody walks in wants a copy of them, you know, to see what the discussion was on May 21st, but I would caution against it, simply for the reason that anybody, anytime this is gonna be distributed, it's gonna be distributed as, as a huge document. Well, what, so, um, what is the First, the following motion was made, seconded, and passed eight to zero. State what the motion was specifically. Quote the motion. Uh, what the way I read this, I'm not. I mean, it, it's not telling me exactly what the motion was, and I found it confusing. I found it um, begging me to go look at what the motion was in the minutes. Well, that's what was in the minutes. I took that right from the minutes. The motion to approve, the, that was the entire motion. Every one of these is quoting the entire motion. Okay, because I didn't go back and look at the minutes. I did. Okay, all right, then, fine. Uh, but, right. I, but I still maintain that we should not attach all of the documents to this, to the idea, it's a bad idea. Um, you know, I, I was quite struck more than once during our that people came to us having watched all the videos, you know. Right. So it seems to me that making available the documentation that supported the decisions is kind of an important thing. Oh, I agree. Now, I see. I agree. I see, they're all available. Yeah, I'm just saying that any time the, the clerk prints this report for somebody who walks in, they're going to get, and there's no reason for somebody to get this when all of the documents are available. I just don't think that that's what the, the charter and the, and the ordinance are calling for. Every, every document that ever, that this committee received be part of the report. Yeah. Well, once again, this is actually uh, most likely people are going to get this report by getting going online, getting the digital report. You can put a link to the minutes mm -hmm. on there. Um, short of the printed document, I, I, I take the solicitor's point that that's kind of goes back to our other issue that it'd be too big. It would it would be too much and but anyone who is curious about the minutes can go will access to online and um, um, and will and if there is a link or a hyperlink on anything like the motion for instance and you could click on it and take you the minutes describing it. Yeah. And that would be and I and I believe honestly that's probably nine tenths, with the exception of Robbie and Stan, of the way people who will access this document they will get printouts and they will. But it, it's it that seems I I, well, I I think that addresses both issues. Right? I guess, okay, so so the reporting distribution is is one one issue. A more cogent issue to me was 
uh, what is the what is the council who's going to enact this going to need to enact? And if you just really you know if you're just citing well, this wonderful body passed something eight to nothing, is that going to do the trick? Oh yeah, sometimes yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. The, the recommended committee, if it's a unanimous vote, and if you have the color of the debate somehow described in there, which is actually this is the, the narrative. That's why you have subcommittees in some respects is to, to do that. But in the course of the debate, if someone has questions and they ask, um, then you can access the minutes in the course well, of the debate. I just want to include what I expect would happen here is that you know the the, the council is going to take this, and if and if they want to make major revisions to the to the charter, we're going to hire consultants to help us. It's not like this; we're just going to wholesale and incorporate them into the charter. It's going to be a process. If you go out to committees, it's, it's it's going to be a process. And so all of the people, all of the counselors who are going to be dealing with clearly know how to find the minutes if they're interested in what the discussion was. And I, I just think it's a mistake to, to have it as part of the report because there are some people who are going to want printed reports and it's going to be too much. Well, then the other thing was there are a couple of Occasions during our work when we, we, we met with our predecessor, and and we required we asked for their documentation, and we asked for their deliberations, and so I think we owe it to our pre, you know our successors, but but it will be available. If Annie's work is going to be a, in her in her well, yeah, <laughs> she'll be her with that, and her and her children's children as well. I mean, the, you know, but still. The notion of what is the and you, you know you may be right. What is the what is the best strategy for us to to turn over our effort to the next council with the with the maximum likelihood that they'll do something? Put, put it on their radar and let them run with it. That's what's going to happen. I mean, this is just really putting it on their radar and not trying to convince them one way or another. They're going to you know they're going to have their own political cal calculations. They're going to have their own. You know, ways of looking at this, and it's going to have a life of its own. Well, that so, Alan, is what you're objecting to the, the sentence that says the approved minutes of all meetings of both copies of written testimony received by the committee are attached to the sentence? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's, all right. that's a problem. Then that is easily fixed. We'll simply say that they're available in the city clerk's office. Perfect. Okay. okay. And, and, and yeah. as Bill said, and can be found here, if you're getting this online, here's a here's a oh, link, link yeah. to. Yeah. All the minutes are. Are you on yeah. 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 That, yeah. You've been consistent in this in this direction since the get-go. And we had you been here when we discussed this probably. Yes. I, I, yes, that's that, that's that's a great suggestion. Well, we've already surpassed the printing committee in nineteen eighty nine. Well there's gotta be some money. <laughs> what did they use it for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want that sixteen thousand. <laughs> Several stops on the All right, so. That weren't authorized. Yeah, we're not authorized. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think uh, we've answered that. Right. I didn't realize that these were actual quotes from them, because they're not in quotes. Well, we could put them in quotes. They'll put the whole part of it. We can make that clearer with, with quotes, I think. Um, the question, though, that remains is uh, this executive summary is highlighting what we regard as the, as the uh, you know, chief recommendations, the, the major issues. We would, in, uh, as we envisioned it, we were going to include the, um, you know, the Google Doc, which has all of the recommended changes, that people would find the housekeeping, more housekeeping mm -hmm. kinds of fixes. And not include those in the executive summary. Is that? Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. That, that seems reasonable. Okay. Um, is it a Google Doc or is it just a, like a red line doc? It's a, well, it's a Google Doc that Sam printed up and it actually highlights, it's color coded um, based on housekeeping versus uh, substantive changes. There it is. Okay. Um, so, for Alan, for completeness sake, that would be part of the report. Yes. Okay. Is 
team. I have a question about in that report draft we have. It doesn't include the stuff about Smith Oak. Are we considering that a housekeeping thing versus a more substantive change? Uh, it, uh, it includes the the change of in process of filling vacancies on this superintendent of the school. Um, but not adding onto the annual budget policy section and not. Um, I have three things down for changing Smith Oak. Actually, I'm that's, I would say that actually to Sam's suggestion that it's important to include all the Smith Oak items principally because we had a trustee come and speak and essentially say that they were an entity that was, had the same affiliation no, yeah. or answer yeah. to the same authority of the city. And I think that any opportunity for misinterpretation mm -hmm. of their status in the community by, by absence or omission here might reinforce that sense. And I would like to uh, reflect that they are a school district under the aegis of the city of Northampton and its administration, not a separate standalone entity, as was represented by one of the trustees. And to add to that, I think that I saw it as more of a respect thing, too, that we are recognizing right. that we have another school district. Do we, I mean, I, I pretty much went through and, and dealt with every past motion. Did we pass a motion on that particular thing? We did. We passed three motions on Smith Oak. Yeah, if you look at, um, at Sam's document, <coughs> equalizing superintendents of Smith Oak, which simply is the center on, on those three, what is the filling of vacancies? And uh, the uh, including Smith School, <coughs> excuse me, trustees with the uh, superintendent of school, the school committee. And the city council in the joint meeting uh, for uh, starting the budget process. And then the, the other one is uh, section 3 3 appointments by the mayor. Um, uh, yeah, excluding Smith as, as the school committee is excluded from appointments by the mayor. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can easily. Um, I, I'm, I see the, the value of grouping those in a, in a separate um, section here under the, um, under the you'll uh, just break those out. Smith School is called, you know, Smith, Smith School. About Smith Vocational. Yes, yes. Smith Vocational. And Agricultural. Smith Agricultural and Vocational High School. High school. <laughs> Otherwise known in, in the charter is uh, Smith Voc. <laughs> as, in the uh, charter. And the charter is the superintendent of Smith's agricultural school. Yeah. Yeah, we can use it. Is it only in the charter only listed as the agricultural school? Uh, it, uh, yeah. 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 It's, uh, superintendents of Smith's agricultural school. Well, I might subject us to another vote at some point, which is to actually just to amend these, essentially a Scrivener's error to have the complete and accepted title of the school. Again, just to avoid any sense of misunderstanding in the future. Well, that's, I mean, from, yeah, from. It's Smith Vocational Agriculture. Well, yeah. Yes. Is, is there something in, in the, uh, Ellen, are you aware of anything that, Whatever, whatever set yeah. up the Smith School. That I'm getting to the statute right now. I actually think that's how they're listed on the ballot. Too. Well, yeah. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. so we talked about this because calling them the superintendents is confusing yeah. because they have a right. superintendent, right. but that's what it says in the bill. Yeah. Right. The the trustees are superintendents. Yeah. Alan's 
walk this dark path. That your most recent scare. No, 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 no. <laughs> Those are new scouts. Section 24, Smith Agricultural School. By Smith, statute. Smith apostrophe S. Please, Smith. Smith Agricultural School, established under the blah, 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 shall be maintained by the city of Northampton as a state aided approved vocational technical school. The superintendents of the said school shall consist of the mayor and superintendent of the school. That's what it's called. Okay. Smith Agricultural School, not Smith's. It's referred to in the entire chart as Should we clean that up? As well? Okay. We're here. <laughs> so we're the cleanup crew. We're here. Yes, to some extent. Okay. Okay. It's okay. We got it once, though. It said the recommendation for the percentage is on the board of trustees for the Smith Agricultural and Vocational yeah. High School. I know, I know. That's, 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 my that's my writing. That's my writing. And it's that's vocational, and I'm, isn't it S B A S? Yes, yeah. yeah. vocational yes. agricultural. Right. So, but I, I think for the purposes of the charter, uh, we need to refer to it as, as its family name. Yeah. So, uh, Early, you want to make that motion? Well, uh, so he's listed as the Smith Agricultural, Agricultural School, not the Smith mm -hmm. School of Agriculture. Okay, Smith Agricultural School. So um, in all occurrences, I move that in all occurrences in the charter that the Smith Agricultural School will be listed as such. But Second. Any further discussion? Annie? The roll, please. Uh, Councilor Dwight? Yes. Lynn Simmons? Yes. Sam Hopper? Yes. Stan Walton? Yes. Robbie Sullivan? Bob Walrus? Mod Fox? Okay. That was a good catch. Um, uh, <coughs> and, and so, yes, we will, we will, um, we will create a section in the, in the executive summary for dealing with the three uh, changes that we voted for the to Smith Agricultural School. All right. Other comments, suggestions on the on that part of the executive summary. Okay. Uh, comments, suggestions on the topics of your study. I, I, if I may, I, I suspect that we'll learn more. But we'll probably have some more identified more probably at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So we want to hold off on that. At least already we identified one more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and okay. Uh, well, yes. Uh, I mean, this is a work in progress. Yeah. So, if, if there, but if there are any, any thoughts that people have at this point, um, if anything we've left out that you would like to see in this? Um, Um, in some way, maybe actually reflect that we we acknowledge that this is the ten year review is is required by charter, but that charter petitions can happen anytime, and that uh, should should uh, any of these issues actually uh, in, in the process of discussion become more uh, fleshed out, that they can be advanced as a petition later on. It's not something that, I mean, my only concern is that somebody would think that for, for further study, then we wouldn't talk about it for 10 more years, is what I'm saying. Is that, um, okay? That's that's my only concern. Okay. I could see how someone would go, oh, okay, well, all right, we'll talk about that in 10 years, maybe, who knows? Okay, so, so Bill, on one, two, three, four, five, the sixth paragraph of, of the introduction to the uh, summary recommendations, where we point out, we point readers to the uh, other issues. We uh, regard them as important issues for the study by city officials and point out that charter petitions can be brought forward at, at any time. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the words to that effect, actually, yes. And but the truth is that you know the, the city council could take this up, these things up now, even though the city absolute church charter committee exactly. never got to them, they still could take them up. Yeah. So within it's not, the context of this, yeah. Um, yeah uh, so maybe what we want to say is, even though the committee didn't get to a point where we made recommendations, these are things that we would urge in this or future rounds of uh, amendments be considered. I like that better. Okay, okay. So uh, and, and, uh, we urge further study by city officials for inclusion in this or future uh, amendments to the charter. But yes, I, I agree this is a work in progress. I think we may well be adding to it as we go along. Translation services tomorrow. Um, if we want to go ahead and translate that document, it'll be ninety dollars, and they'll have it by the end of the week. Okay. Okay. Now, did, did you say, Lynn, that we could also send this out um, to the school? Yes. If I get it done in time, and get it to the superintendent's office for approval. Okay. Yes. Great. Um. And uh, Patty has said that she will help post flyers if we want to identify some places that we want to put flyers beyond that general sort of dissemination to parents. Um, I, I know we've talked a lot about uh, the housing authority property. Um, other, other, I mean, what other places can people think about that would be useful? In Restaurants, a lot of them had, uh, well, yes. the Y, the Y, the telephone poles, telephone poles yeah. which I believe there's still a standing ordinance that doesn't allow that. <laughs> ordinance doesn't allow that, okay. But. We can't have been that, though. But the charter takes precedence over the ordinance. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I disagree with that. I think you should be able to post things on phone calls. But, um, uh, yeah, I think. Five uh, arm, the the uh, uh, um, you know, Schools. Cooper's doesn't have a board, but well, but places like grocery stores or things like that. that. I, I mean, yeah. the schools, Molly, we're talking about already having this a mailing to oh, good families. Yeah. Well, the kids bring it home. 
Right. Yeah. Well, kids right, bring right. 42 right. sheets of paper. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> right. That, that that right. But, but certainly we could also post it in. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, uh, I can post it, I can send it to NCTV as well, and they'll have it. They right. take okay. the board. So yeah. we can send it to the radio stations. Okay, so. Um, we're going to have this then printed in English and in Spanish, right? Yep. That's what, yeah. I mean, the committee wants to do that. Okay. That's, that's, well, that's what goes home to schools, right? But I'm excited. So. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And if so we're having an interpreter at the meeting, then that helps. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're, did you say that you think these will be ready by the end of the week? They'll have a document back to me by Friday. By Friday, If I okay. get it to them tomorrow morning. Okay. So, that's great. Um, my suggestion would be then that, that anybody who wants to and has the time can uh, go in and get in the mayor's office of some of these and take them around to your neighborhoods and put, yeah, put them in places where you think they'll be seen. So, so do you get some? Yeah, yeah, so why don't I, um, when I get the document back from UMass, I can email the group, and, or Annie can email the group and say, we have it ready, and if you want copies, so let us know so we have a packet ready. Yeah, and he can also email a PDF, or something we can post on our various pages, and also I can print up a PDF on that, so just use that, so, yeah. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would there be something that I could post to the Bay State uh, website, a PDF? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I'll, through yeah. Annie, I'll we'll Great. send out the PDF to you in both English and Spanish, and right. then if you want copies, because we can run off them quicker than you maybe can at home, um, you can make them easy. So that will be available in the post either physically or uh, okay. And uh, beyond that, press releases have been sent. Uh, I think any. Uh, Sam and I will go on the uh, probably uh, Bob Flaherty show on the VHMP the week before the Do you want us to call in with? <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, with all the support that we have. I'm with a caller. <laughs> caller. Alan, you say? <laughs> Alan, what's your issue? Yeah, Alan, Alan in a car. Uh, what is this? What are you going to do about the roads? Oh, yeah. Can you do something about the roads <laughs> and the potholes? I live on War Street in the city. Uh, long time fan, first time caller. <laughs> 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 that must be all about the chowder. <laughs> Cooking up. Uh, okay, now in terms of the format of the forum, um, my thought is that um, we would briefly um, introduce the uh, the highlights of our work, and then um, uh, you know, open it up to public comment. And then we will have uh, we will have other agenda items to deal with that night after more extensive public comment. I'm expecting. Uh, well, we I, I think it's important in your introduction to describe what it is the charter is. I mean, yeah. you know, just so people don't. Do call up, but do show up and say, you know, my street is filled with potholes. If you could put that in the charter, just explain this is this is, uh, yeah, we explain this is the equivalent of the, the Constitution that it basically defines our government, not fixes your roads or yeah. puts up little books for you to read about <laughs> murders and stuff. <laughs> it's it, it's 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 more overarching. So. By the way, there were twenty. There were thirteen murders in nineteen twenty-five. Mm. That's the thing that struck me the most out of that whole thing. Wow. Thirteen murders, and that's just sort of that's what Fred was saying. It was thirteen was murders in nineteen twenty-five. Oh my god! Great depression. That's yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 So, is it possible to mention that 
it is it is the next the, the 2020 council that will be working on these and is there any way to encourage candidates to express um, their views on these things or sure can we do that um, well we certainly we'll mention that it's the next you know, city council so it's important for voters to ask candidates about their their um, position yeah, yeah. on these issues and we would love to hear from candidates who ever want to speak to that certainly would yes and we've invited the candidates here for that purpose yes. specifically invited right. every so candidate here for that purpose perfect that should be sailed yeah. it's worth pointing out we've had one candidate who's been almost to as many meetings as most of us so yeah. it's here now yes <laughs> yes his uh, attendance has been exemplary. <laughs> okay, any other, any other thoughts? So that meeting will replace uh, the first no uh, meeting in November. So we will not be meeting on election day. And uh, then our next meeting here would be uh, the 19th. Right, keep a couple more after that. Well, that's on the Well, uh, we have November 19th, and then we also uh, have available. Hmm? Sorry. No, I was talking to myself. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we also have uh, December 3rd before the council. My, you know, I don't want to shut anything down prematurely, but my anticipation or my expectation at this point would be that we would probably be finished with our work by December yeah. 2nd. Yeah. Or the 3rd, the 3rd. The 3rd, yeah. Okay? And it's worth pointing out that December 30th, the last council meeting, is sort of like the last day in the school, we show movies and, we get, you know. And we eat <laughs> and we, and we eat, snacks. Yes, we eat a lot and yeah, take naps. But, well, actually, that's no different than what we do now. But I think that, uh, yes, so this would probably be, or if it should come to that, maybe the only item on the agenda at that point, other than everyone saying goodbye to each other. Well, so. well we're, we're, the we're, we're on December 5th. No, no, I know. We're coming, but then there might be further discussion in the next meeting on this. Oh. Among the counselors, you mean? Yeah, possibly, yeah. Okay. But that will be determined after the presentation with the council president. If the counselors want to discuss it in some way before. Of course, or even propose a resolution to endorse the recommendations was another thing. It was just sort of pass on to the next council. I don't know what's coming up. Okay. Any, any other business tonight? Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.